Now that our next speaker is uh, Mark Scott, uh, the managing director of the ABC, who on the 4th of July 2006 took up this position, uh, a very challenging and very interesting position. And it, it's, I'll be interested to hear his presentation uh, in the context of what he thought at the time the ABC should do. Now, let me just read to you. In his, one of his very first interviews on Sunday Profile, he said, I want the ABC to be loved by Australians. I want it to be respected and I want it to be relevant. I want it to ensure that the stories that we tell really talk about the things that are important to people and really help people bring the country together. <clears throat> now, in those, in the four years since then, there's been, of course, additional remarkable change in terms of uh, the, the digital communication and the commitments that are being made to outreach and bring into context the people that Peter's been talking about. Uh, and so it's a marvellous segue, I think, to introduce Mark now. And I'm, <clears throat> I did promise him that I wouldn't tell everybody that he's the, 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 the grandson of the father uh, and father uh, of the uh, management consulting business in this country. I told him I wouldn't say that because <laughs> everybody does that to Mark. That's right. Come on, Mark. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> Thanks, Hugh. Thanks, Hugh. Um, good, to be, uh, good to be with you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I know you think it's a conference to me. It's a shareholder meeting. Every meeting I go to is a shareholder meeting. Uh, Christmas lunch is a shareholder meeting uh, for me. But I want to talk a little bit about the town square and this concept of the town square. First thing I'm struck by is, is the first and third speakers separated at birth, clearly, coming together. They look, <laughs> it's kind of, I thought it was quite eerie when I saw it out of the back. Um, in this um, media landscape where we're dealing with, there are, there's a remarkable collision, I think, and opportunity that comes together with the new media world and the old media world. Um, who's, got a, who's, got, who's got a page on Facebook? Who's signed up to Facebook? Hugh, you on Facebook? Well, if you want to communicate with your granddaughter, Hugh, that you're going to have to get on Facebook. Five, 500 million citizens of this planet are on Facebook. And they are moving 30 billion pieces of information every month. There are 240 million websites, there are 140 million blogs, 60,000 new blogs a day. Nearly 150 million registered Twitter users, 2.6 billion tweets in the month of August alone. A remarkable transformation from the old media world to the new media world. Let me tell you about the old media world, the media world that I've worked in, that the ABC has operated in now for the best part of 80 years. This is what the old media world looks like. The TV tower, if I look out of my window of my office in Sydney, I see three TV towers up on the hill on the north side of Sydney, and that was the symbol of television. I remember whenever the uh, transmission would go out during a storm as a kid, I envisaged someone climbing this tower to the top to try and get the signal uh, back on air. What's amazing about this form of transmission is that basically one person can be watching or a million people can be watching. And it doesn't really matter. The signal goes out and as many people who have a set and an aerial can tune in and watch what is being broadcast. Very few people had towers. Very few people had television stations and licenses to broadcast. So those few people who were broadcasters, those few people who had control, had enormous power in our society. How did Kerry Packer become the richest man and the most powerful man in Australia? He controlled one of these. And he had a way of reaching into every lounge room in the country with his news programs, with his drama, with his comedy. And for a long, long time in Australia, if you had a television set, you could watch the ABC or one of three commercial networks, and that was all the choice that you had. Few people broadcasting to many people, and the many people were silent. Not just a case, though, with television, the case with printing as well. The old-style printing presses, printing's been around for 500 years, but new-style printing presses, when I was at Fairfax, the Age opened this fantastic new facility 
out near Tullamarine. If you come in from the airport, you see it. State-of-the-art printing press, $220 million. So if you wanted to be in the newspaper business, you needed deep pockets in order to have the printing press, in order to have the trucks, in order to pay for the newsprint, in order to distribute your news to hundreds of thousands of people around the city, to be able to do that in a short period of time, overnight, so that miraculously on your lawn the next morning, there is the newspaper. So again, the model was few people, very powerful, very influential, deciding what's news and delivering that news to millions of people, a one-to-many model. And we know that the newspaper story, the publisher story, is exactly the same as the television story. The most powerful names in the country, the Fairfaxes, the Symes, and of course, the Murdochs, also powerful because they controlled the way of reaching out and linking out to the community. And I would argue that even though there's a debate about how long newspapers will last for and how successful free-to-air television uh, is, that these will be with us for a long period of time to come. Even though I note that yesterday, the publisher of the New York Times in a speech in London conceded that he can see the day when the New York Times will no longer publish. But the one thing we know for sure is that with hundreds of millions of websites, the world's content available to us here, that this media revolution that's been brought about by digital technology has changed, and that anybody with a story to tell, and a computer, a modem, a camera in their pocket, can become a publisher and a broadcaster. And one of the things we know for sure, if your content is good enough, if your content is compelling enough, if your content is engaging enough, then the world will beat a path to your door to hear what you have to say. One of the things we have to do at the ABC, for a long time we were an old style broadcaster. We started on radio nearly uh, 80 years ago. We started on television 50 years ago. So we were in the one to many business. But now our audiences have a different expectation. Our audiences have an expectation that they won't simply watch us or listen to us at a time that suits us, but we have to deliver what we're delivering at a time that suits them. The model for the ABC in television for nearly 50 years was the news is on at seven o'clock. You know the news is on at seven o'clock. Don't turn up at 10 past seven and expect to see the news. The news is on at seven. Ian Henderson starts at seven. He's not gonna wait for you at 10 past seven. So you be there at seven o'clock. And that was the contract we had with the Australian people. And they were pretty happy with that. We all understood the rules and how it operates. But now the rules are pretty clear and straightforward. We, you have an expectation that we will deliver to you the latest, the best the ABC has to offer at a time you want, on a device you want, in a format you want. And we need to change in order to do that. And that's what we're doing. This is the ABC uh, iPhone app. Um, and the latest version of the iPhone app has News 24 on it, which means that you can, through your mobile phone, <laughs> click on and watch live streaming uh, ABC News as it's happening on your mobile phone. More than a million Australians have downloaded this app. So more than a million Australians are carrying around in their pocket a screen that delivers the latest and the best of ABC News uh, to them right now. This is the ABC Triple J Unearthed site. Unearthed is a, um, a site created by Triple J for unsigned Australian musicians and artists where if you don't have a recording contract but you have talent, or even if you don't have talent, you can upload your music, <laughs> you can upload your music to the Triple J site and audiences around the country can listen to your music, they can vote if they like it. The most popular uh, pieces of music are drawn to the attention of the uh, Triple J programmers and the best music gets played on air on Triple J. So unsigned musicians have a way of letting their talent be found and identified and played. 200,000 copies of the Triple J Unearthed site are out there on uh, mobile phones now. And uh, just recently, um, the, the ABC iPad app, already 100,000 of these, which allows people, in a sense, to carry around with them in their pocket the, the best of um, uh, the ABC, including live ABC News 24, those hipsters, David and Margaret, 
there on the iPad. Kerry is up there too, the latest Kerry cross-examination. Media Watch is there so you can look at uh, Jonathan Holmes attack me. Uh, it's all there on the iPad app. So this is the way the technology is going, but more importantly than that, we need to respond in how we take advantage of the opportunities on this, because there is a new town square out there. And let me talk about what I mean by the town square. The town square is a place where these two worlds come together. Broadcasting, traditional journalists, experts communicating, one to many, and the power of the audience to engage and to respond. And we talk about the town square as a place where Australians from all over can come together. A place where we can listen and learn, a place where we can speak and be heard. Where a conversation takes place in the community, rather than experts and oracles broadcasting one to many. And we are seeing many, many opportunities for the dialogue and the conversation to grow. So we're reaching out, we are distributing in a more versatile way, where there is an audience contribution that is real and that is substantive, where the ABC is no longer the only expert, the only oracle, but we recognise there is expertise in the community that we can draw from and tap into. And we recognise that the future of our content isn't just what the professionals are creating, but a mix of what we are creating and what the community is creating. And one of the ways that we are developing this and moving with this is to create something called ABC Open. And let me, uh, let me just show you the brief trailer which explains what we're trying to do with ABC Open. Tuesday morning on Janet Street, Newcastle, and recently the council has seen fit to put in a long series of speed bumps. This podcast is about Oshitaka, or what we call Lilke Pungata. Frost and we're in Cessnock shooting in a retro hair salon. What I'm hoping to get out of my photographs today is just some nice retro shots. There's a fantastic wallpaper in the background which I think will come up fabulous in shots. Just to have some fun, I'm still learning. I've only had my camera for six months so the girls have been great in sharing and helping me, you know, sort of enjoy it. A major police operation has begun in the Upper Florentine Valley to dismantle a long-standing protest camp. The ABC has come down and we're just sitting together some videos about the community and it's turned out really good, especially with all the audio, video and pictures that we've taken. It's opened up an avenue in which to share those stories. We could spend a year down here trying to develop the same skills that we've attained in the past three days.
So we're putting 50 people out in regional and rural Australia to work with local communities to take advantage of the latest digital tools so that they can create their stories and tell their stories. And then we're going to use the platform and the reach of the ABC to broadcast some of those stories, to host them online, to use the power of our distribution platform to connect those stories with the rest of Australia with an understanding that if we collaborate, if we share, we will understand each other more and be able to have more of a national conversation around issues that are important. In a sense, we've been in this community feedback thing for a long time. Across the road this morning, John, John Fain is thundering away on 774, opening up the phones, listening to the community the way that we always have for a long period of time. Um, and there are more and more ways we're looking to do this as well. We've created a new website called The Drum, where a full range of viewpoints are on display every day around an array of contentious issues in the community, offering a chance for the community to respond and engage and debate with each other, recognising that the voice and expertise of the community is just as important as anything that we have to offer uh, as broadcasters. And I think a compelling example almost of what Peter was talking about, where the political and the community comes together, is our experience with Q&A this year where our audiences around Q&A grow every week as politicians come and answer questions not from journalists, but from the public, from the audience, from emails, from messages tweeted in, from uh, video clips that are sent in. And in a sense, we recognise now that our audience asks different questions uh, to our journalists. And the resonance of the conversation is strikingly different. And I would argue that one of the turning points for Julia Gillard's campaign was in fact Q&A and her performance in Q&A and the way she demonstrated she could connect with the community through her Q&A appearance. And this is just informing back now where we are uh, back in our traditional broadcasting. After the bushfires, we did a tremendous website called Black Saturday, uh, which allowed people to tell their own stories. A, a, a website that was so powerful that Australian Story then went and created a story based on the experiences that we've had. So there's lots happening at the ABC as we learn, as we learn to, to try and connect with our community, listen to our community voices and create the town square. Let me conclude with one line that I often use at the ABC. It's, it's line by the American futurist John Shah, who says, the future is not a place that we are going, it's a place that we're making. And the paths to the future are made, not found. And the process of making them changes both us and our final destination. I think at the ABC, we're not quite sure what this digital future is like, but we are aware that together we are making a pathway there. And we're making a pathway there with the Australian people, and we think a key to that pathway will indeed be the town square, where all Australians can come to listen and learn, to speak and to be heard. Thank you very much.